Okay, in the last video we left off talking about uh, finding out, calculating the concentration from a solubility product constant. And this table here shows a uh, list of a bunch of different uh, solubility product constants broken down into their different uh, categories, carbonates, hydroxides, chromates, phosphates, etc. So they're easy to find. They'll have these pretty small numbers here because these all work when they're not very sol soluble. Okay, so that uh, those values in the table can be used to predict whether precipitate will form when any two ionic solutions are mixed. Okay, so we use this to, to figure out if we're going to get a precipitate or not. And to help do that, we use something called to calculate the QSP. Okay, so that's the initial from the initial concentrations of the ions, we calculate a solubility product constant. That's from the initial concentrations, not from the equilibrium, but just from the initial ones. Okay, and that's called the QSP. Okay, but so it's calculated the same way as the KSP, but it's using the initial moles per liter concentrations instead of the moles per liter at equilibrium. And we use this to compare it to the KSP. So if the, if the QSP is less than the KSP, the solution is unsaturated, no precipitate will form. If it's about equal to it, then the solution is, sac is saturated and it's not, no change is going to occur. But if it's greater than that, that means there's going to be a, uh, a precipitate will occur. And it will happen when, the, uh, when they mix these two solutions together, the um, combine to the, the ions won't be able to dissolve so they'll go back and form the original product and that will precipitate out of the solution. So you have to problems like this predict whether precipitate of lead chromate lead, I mean lead chlorine chloride will form if 100 milliliters of this molar um, NaCl is added to um, 100 milliliters of two molar lead nitrate. Okay, so we're getting the, the lead from this one. The nitrate is readily solvable. Salt, this is just table salt, this is readily solvable. So we're going to see if we get a precipitate of lead and chlorine if we add these two solutions together. And the KSP of lead chloride is this number here. Okay, so how do we do that? So we look at the original, uh, the KSP for lead is the concentration of the lead times the concentration of the chlorine. And since we, um, uh, the chlorine is not s squared. Well, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's squared because of this two right here. So we have to get two chlorines, right? So you get two ions here, you get one lead and two chlorines. So that squared is right. Sorry about that. Okay, so mixing the solutions dilutes them by half. So instead of having, instead of having, you know, each of these in one milliliter, instead of having the chlorine being in 100 milliliters, now the chlorine's in 200, right? Because there's no chlorine here. So we put these two together. So we have to divide these molarities by half. So the lead is 0 0.02, so that goes to 0 0.01. The chlorine is 0.01, so that goes to 0.005. So these are the initial concentrations of our lead and chlorine when we mix them together before any reaction takes place, right? Because there's this, we have 200 milliliters of solution. So now the, the chlorine, instead of being in 100 milliliters, it's in 200, the same with the lead. Instead of being in 100, now it's mixed with 200. And the the, the uh, sodium and the nitrate stay dissolved, right? Those are um, ions that readily dissolve in water and they stay dissolved. They are hardly ever form precipitates, okay? So the QSP is just these two numbers multiplied again. Remember, we are put the squared there for the chlorine concentration, so we get this. So comparing it to this number, what do we find out? So the KSP is less the QSP is less than the KSP, so that means it's unsaturated and the precipitate will not form. All the lead chlorine uh, chloride will dissolve in this solution that we made. 
Okay, so um, this table here shows the um, original solutions, and we mix them together. I don't know what they're talking about here. It's all right. Um, common ion effect. Okay, why is lead chromate less soluble in aqueous solution of uh, potassium chromate than in pure water? Okay, so this is the common ion effect. So you can see that if we have uh, a solution that's got um, lead chromate in it and we mix it with a solution that's got potassium chromate in it, well, the chromate is a common ion, right? So this is going to double our chromate ion um, concentration, right, when we, when we mix these together. And so that will get us up. So pure water, we just have, um, you know, the lead and the chromate. Okay, so there's nothing else there. That's, that's all it is. So we have a 0.1 molar solution of uh, potassium chromate. We get extra, extra chromate here. We get extra chromate in our solution. So that's going to combine with the lead and make it so that um, that lead chromate will might precipitate out. Okay. So when we have a common ion in two solutions, the effect is that it um, lowers the solubility. It may lower it enough that a precipitate forms. You have to do that QSP calculation to figure that out. But this is the um, the main effect that I want you to know is that if we have the common ion in two solutions that we mix together, that's going to lower the solubility of whatever um, product we're looking at. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.